numbers behind us, or is there more downside ahead? Let's bring in Adam Parker, founder and CEO of Trivariate Research and a CNBC contributor, and Rebecca Patterson, former chief investment strategist at Bridgewater Associates. Great to see you both. Uh, uh, Adam, so we have a growth scare of some sort going on, a hedge fund panic of some description alongside of it, um, and, you know, some rethink about the Fed and, uh, and maybe AI-driven earnings. In your view, what's the market struggling with and how much have we repriced appropriately? I mean, thanks for having me. It's great to be with you guys. Yeah. Uh, and, it, it, you know, the, the tee-up was right. I mean, it's a very volatile week. I think people are confused. I think a lot of the bottom-up stock pickers I know, hedge fund guys, covered some shorts. Just thinking, all right, I got, I got an opportunity to get some stuff down. And I don't want to say they're, you know, two feet in on the long ideas, but they're trying to kind of look at... Um, you know, some of the long ideas to add. I really think if it's a, it matters if it's a growth stock or a value stock. If it's a growth stock, I don't think the major themes have changed. I think you still believe in AI semiconductors, and now you get them 35% cheaper. So there's really quality names you can look at that maybe you, you were worried about, uh, whether it's NVIDIA or Cadence or whatever your favorite chip maker. I think people are trying to figure out, is this the point that I get a bottom below 100 on NVIDIA, and now I have a little bit of good risk reward into right. earnings print at the end of the month? I think that makes sense. So the growth themes that are in place, I think people are looking to. I, I think the main learning lesson on the negative side is that there is no such thing as a value stock if the momentum's bad. If the stocks have behaved bad, on average, the market's telling you they're not going to be good when the economy slows. So, like, is Intel, you know, do I want to buy the, yeah. like the stuff that's really lagged? I don't think so, you know. And so yeah. I think that's really the, the decision I'm making. And the other thing i just say lastly is there's no question the consumer's slowing. You can't take a step back from the July earnings and say, Hey, that was that was a head fake. That was a Japanese carry trade, or that was disparate. Yeah. Like, that was not. That was whether it was visa, restaurants, travel, auto, housing. Like, McDonald's had its first right. same store sale drop in four years. It, it's not an anomaly. Right. Hershey it, couldn't get the yeah. price. There's just enough data points across the, sure. the consumer spectrum to say, yeah, it's it's not imploding, but it's eroding. I got an okay Uber print. I got you know, sure. you know master car was better than Visa. But there's enough in that data pool to say the consumer slowed. Yeah. Rebecca, I'd love for you to put the, the yen carry trade and the sort of macro frictions that we were feeling this week into some kind of perspective. Is this an ongoing issue we're going to be contending with? Well, I think this week was a good reminder that all investors need to carry ab care about currencies. Um, you know, year to date, if you bought the Nikkei, uh, if you hedged out the yen, you're up about 4.6 percent as a dollar-based investor. If you didn't, you're up about half a percent. So it matters in that sense. But then, of course, it matters when you have things like the yen. We had extreme positioning. The short positions in the yen were the biggest we'd seen in years and extreme valuations. And so one slightly more hawkish than expected BOJ announcement, um, plus some of the worries about the U.S., because Japan is still very dependent on U.S. demand, that was enough to get that ball rolling. And we see that the global contagion um, was pretty severe. So I think it was a good reminder that, you know, for all of us, whether we're bottom up stock pickers or macro investors, currency has to be part of what you're keeping an eye on, especially when things get extreme. I think at this point, you know, you look at the big banks FX desk to get a, an idea where we are. And I'll just go to my alma mater, JP Morgan. They're saying maybe 65, 75 percent of the short positions have been unwound at this point. So there's room we could still see some more. Um, so I don't know if we're out of the woods on this, but we, we probably are pretty far down the track in terms of getting to a cleaner market position. Adam, you mentioned that you think the worst case outcome for over the coming weeks is data that continues to show sticky inflation. And we'll get some more data on that next week. But slowing growth, yeah. that combination has been really negative on sentiment in the past. Right. You, you still feel that, that that's the thing that we need to be most concerned about in the coming week? Um, you know, I think the, there was a minute last week where I thought bad news was bad and good news was good, you know, that we got into that yeah. sort of normal scenario yeah. again. Uh, you described stagflation, right? And I, in that scenario, I can't find any historical example where the stock market acts well. Yeah. So I think you're right that that would kind of tilt people to the negative. I'm not really sure that's the base case uh, and that I position for it. Um, you know, look, I, it's funny. I did this um, risk dinner with 10 folks on the buy side in the middle of this week. And zero people said that they, uh, you know, had anything about the Japanese carry trade as a risk until they heard about it ex post, <laughs> yeah. right? So I think right. the challenge on Rebecca's comment on currency is like we sort of know we're supposed to pay attention, but we just don't know when. 
I searched every earnings call transcript for every mention of the yen, and there really weren't many. In, in the last quarter, there was one. It was Aflac, because they have a big Japanese business. Yeah, sure. There's like 12 this quarter, and the currency was massively moving all year, right? So it's just hard for the bottom-up stock picker guys to have a clue about when it matters, even though I listen to her and think, yeah, she's yeah. right, it's obvious. I feel like a moron that I wasn't you know, thinking about it. <laughs>